our guest is Jeff Carr, and I often say Jay because I generally call him Jay Carr. But uh, the guest is Jay, uh, Jeff Carr, and uh, the issue is his uh, participation in uh, activities dealing with uh, African-American theater in Nashville. And of course, Jeff, let's see if we can uh, pick up where we left off the last time and have you to uh, talk about art uh, in a real sense in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and some of the other things that uh, you have encountered in all of your wide range of experiences outside of Nashville. Yeah. Uh, Doc, a lot of people look at Nashville and they say, why Nashville? And frankly, it started when I was at Tennessee State. Mm -hmm. Uh, there were people who uh, were fellow students and, and peripheral pe members of the community mm -hmm. who saw some of the things that we did at TSU, saw some of the student leadership activities we mm -hmm. partook in, uh, saw some of the initiatives that we launched, mm -hmm. and I would consistently get the same thing. They said, mm -hmm. oh man, you're real good. Mm -hmm. You need to get out of Nashville. Mm -hmm. and, and so <laughs> you can't be good in Nashville. <laughs> right. that, that, was the, that was the growing with so-called wisdom. Mm -hmm that you got, you got to get out of Nashville. Um, you need to be in L.A., you need to be in New York, you need to be in D.C., you need to be in Chicago, where things are really happening. And so we would get that a lot. I would get that a lot. And so I worked in Nashville for a while, doing everything from, I have a background in community organizing, and of course film and television and theater and music and that kind of thing. But there was something about the draw as a young man to New York that I always had. Mm -hmm. It's that notion of if I can make it there, I can make, make it, it anywhere. anywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took off and, and went there, and again was almost there, almost three years, mm -hmm. and found that not only was I able to work in New York, mm -hmm. but I was able to work all over the place mm -hmm. from being in New York. And I was able to pull those experiences together into a body of work that was impressive to some, but was still mm -hmm. just a, a learning experience mm -hmm. for me. And so at that point, I said, the only way Nashville is going to be a place where people eventually want to come mm -hmm. to is if we go back and create the kind of institutions mm -hmm. that I always wanted to have here as a young man. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I came back. Uh, my father and my mother uh, were aging also. I had an opportunity to spend a lot of time with my dad, even more time with my dad, rest his soul, he passed mm -hmm. in 2001. Mm -hmm. But being able to be in close proximity to, fr to family and friends mm -hmm. was important but also to establish the cultural things that I needed to establish here so that another generation would not be told, mm -hmm. you gotta get out of Nashville. Nashville. Mm -hmm. The Nashville tradition is such that um, we, if we don't remember it, mm -hmm. we don't value all of the incredible things that happen right here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. I wrote a play uh, a few years ago called Ordinary Heroes, mm -hmm. and it explored uh, Dr. Lawson and the whole history of the sit-in movement mm -hmm. here in the late 50s and early 60s, as you, you well know mm -hmm. much better than me. But th that movement started here, mm -hmm. and the Diane Nashes and the C.T. Vivians mm -hmm. and all of the, the students from Fisk and TSU mm -hmm. that did all of the, that they did here mm -hmm. in this community was amazing. And I mm -hmm. found that as we did that play at Fisk Memorial Chapel, a whole generation of young people didn't even know, know the about story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They had no idea. Mm -hmm. And so I was sitting in the back of the audience one day in, in the chapel, and there was a picture of the state capitol, and there was a policeman uh, dragging a young black man down the middle of, I guess it was uh, Dedrick Street. Mm -hmm. And one of the kids said, hey, man, that's down by the bus shelter. <laughs> <laughs> so I leaned forward. I said, yeah, that's where it is. Mm -hmm. And after the show, he was, he was so shocked that every day he waits on the bus on the corner there, and he had no idea mm -hmm. that 30 years ago, somebody like him would have been dragged up and down that mm -hmm. street. And it gave him a new appreciation. So that's what uh, informed mm -hmm. and confirmed for me the work that I was doing mm -hmm. and its importance, because art can do that. Mm -hmm. There are some kids who might not pick up a book. Mm -hmm. uh, they might not be blessed to sit in a class with, mm -hmm. with Dr. Haney. They might, we, we might not be able to get them to that point mm -hmm but they'll see something on TV, mm -hmm. uh, they'll see something, they'll hear something in some music, mm -hmm. uh, they'll see something visually that will arrest them mm -hmm. and arrest something inside of them and make them want to be a part of a greater story. Mm -hmm. And that's where uh, it came as, as affirmation to me that we were mm -hmm. doing the right thing. And that's the power of art. And the, the tradition is here. Mm -hmm. Music City is Music City because of the Fifth Jubilee Singers mm -hmm. traveling around taking the music of the Negro spiritual to the world. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the artistic uh, kind of tradition goes from Oprah Winfrey, uh, Moses Gunn, dating back to, mm -hmm. to even the 40s, mm -hmm. with Dr. Thomas E. Pogue at Tennessee State University taking students mm -hmm. all over the world. This tradition is a powerful mm -hmm. tradition, and we stand on the shoulders of those giants who have come before us. Mm -hmm. So we, we keep pressing in, in those areas, and we're going to be successful mm -hmm. at turning some things around here. Jeff, uh, 